Hello, I got asked by a subscriber, could I do a video on the S10 versus the CT12 or FM12 versus the Forshida F2, I've got an A4 there. So, I like all of these masks personally, but it's sort of which one's the best bang for your buck, uh, and which would you like the most out of all the three of the masks. So I'll be going over the pros and cons of them compared to each other. But as I said, all three of these are very good masks, so if you find any of them for a good price, just go for it because you won't regret it. So, as you can see, the two masks on the left look very similar, and that's because the CT12 in the middle is kind of the second generation of the S10s. So, this is an Avon S10 on the left. The British Army used this from the 1980s till very recently, a few years ago where it was replaced by the Scott GSR. It's a very, very good mask. It takes 40mm filters on the left side, so it's for right-handed shooters. It has a drinking tube there. On this side, it has a secondary voice diaphragm. There's also one here, sort of an exhale valve. And you've got very big, wide eyepieces. Also has a ridge that runs around it here for some reason. And the straps are made of rubber. The FM12 and CT12 on the right, the CT12 just doesn't have a drinking tube, that's the only difference between it and an FM12, it was basically the modernisation of the S10. The difference being the eye lenses are smaller, but it actually sits closer to your face, so that doesn't make a difference. And the voice diaphragm, sort of secondary exhale valve, all of that is unscrewable, so you'd unscrew this. And then you could have a filter on each side, or you could change it if you're a left-handed shooter to have the filter on the right side of the mask. Really clever design, because it means you don't have to make two types of factory mask. You can just make one of one of these plugs, and the wearer can alter the mask to suit their need. And it has fabric straps. They're not as good for a uh, chemical scenario, having fabric straps. But they do make the mask a lot more comfortable, and I personally prefer them. And on the right we have a Forshida F2A4, which is a Swedish gas mask. From what I understand, the A4 is designed for civilians, whereas a normal F2 is a military version. The only differences I know of is the F2 military version has a drinking tube here. Again, I'm not fussed by that because I have no real need for a drinking tube. And this bit's permanently sealed, um, where on the military version it's a bit like the... Um, CT12, FM12 as far as I'm aware, where you can switch the thing around but that's absolutely fine for me. So you've got like an exhale valve type thing at the bottom as well as an exhale valve voice diaphragm here and you'll notice with this compared to, although it's a very similar mask to the S10 and CT12, the eyepieces are more triangular uh, than the others. Now in terms of weight to the masks, the S10 is definitely the heaviest but bear in mind it does have the drinking tube on it I'd say that the CT12 is obviously light in the S10, but the Forshida is probably easily the lightest of the lot. The rubber's probably a little bit thinner on this than this, but both are overall very good masks, and it doesn't feel like a compromise at all having that one a bit lighter. So first for the S10, and while the S10 does have a nose cap type thing inside it, which you can hopefully sort of see through there, I find it doesn't sit as far to your face. That was one of the things they tried to improve with the FM12 and CT12, which you'll see in a minute, is that it actually sits much closer to the wearer's face, which improves the comfort of the mask, makes it feel tighter, and you actually get the better visibility, as said, because your face is closer to the front of the mask. What I'm going to do with these three masks when I have them on, so you can hear the voice diaphragm, I'm not going to amplify the volume, uh, I'm not going to normalise the volume between the clips, so what you hear is what you get, pretty much, with the mask. Other than that, the S10 is comfortable. I find the S10 round the chin area seems to weigh more, which is a bit off-putting. As I said, this is a very good mask. I think it's still one of the best masks you can get on the market. The British Army, in my opinion, was foolish to change from this to the GSR, because the p benefits of an S10 outweigh the cost, but... It is a good mask, um, but as I said, it does feel a bit heavy normally around the chin and the every, uh, area. Uh, to adjust the straps you can either pull them, but there's these little sort of flip out catches which are quite stiff on this one. Yeah, never mind, I won't do that now. But, as I said, having fabric straps in my opinion is better. 
But other than that, the S10 is a very good mask, but hopefully you can see in this video that it does stick a bit further out from my face, which is improvements of the other two masks, how they don't do that. Right, now I have the um, CT12 on, and I have to say that's a lot more comfortable. Hopefully you can see that it's actually closer to my face, where the eyes are. The nose cup's actually almost a bit too big, I find, on this mask for me, but it's actually a very good fit other than that. It's just in your peripheral vision now, you've got a bit of the nose cup. Um, not much to say on it other than, you know, like the S10. It's pretty much the same type of mask. This is just the improved version. The idea being, you bring the mask closer to the wearer's face and smaller eyepieces give you a wider range of view. Few people have asked me this, I'll answer it in the video. The outserts for the S10, I don't have any on here, but you know, I've got some of those cherry red ones. Or you can get like the anti-flash ones. They don't fit on the CT12 or FM12 because the eyepieces are a slightly different shape. They're smaller on this. The voice diaphragm, if you can see that, is actually smaller as well. Or well, the main XL valve is smaller as well. Not by much, but it is smaller on the um, CT12, FM12. I was really lucky to get this mask because I got it for around £30, I think, for one that was dated 2001. Uh, these have a 20 year shelf life, so it runs out in 2021, and I bought this quite a few years ago, so £30 for a mask that at the time was probably 10 years old, if that, is a really good deal. There's not much to complain about this mask, this is definitely one of my favourite masks. Um, I said the fabric head strap ends up being a lot more comfortable than the rubber one, and it's easier to tighten, because you can just literally do this. And it tightens itself. But yeah, it's a very comfortable mask. Um, as I said, only drawback is that bit, but it might be there's a size of this that fits my head slightly better than this one, but otherwise this one is good enough. So, so what I want to say is the CT12 in my book wins over the S10, but then again it should because this is like the second generation of S10. Um, Price-wise, as long as you're not paying massively more than S10, the CT12 or FM12 is clearly the winner in that regard. Alright, now for the Forshida F2A4. Apparently the voice diaphragm on this isn't quite as good as those other two masks, which I can believe, but this is still easily good enough for what you want. Again, like the, with the CT12, your face sits a lot closer to the lenses, so I'd say out of all the masks, this one I'd say has the best vision. Firstly because it's triangular. The nose cup doesn't get in your way as much, and, um, you know, because of the bigger goggles, and you're close to it. So all in all, you get very good vision with this. The mask, again, is probably the lightest weight of all of these, so that's a good factor. I'm not fussed about the drinking tube, so the A4 for me is better than the F2, because it reduces the weight of the mask. Um, and yeah, as I said, it'd be better if, like the military version, you could replace that to put a dual filter on. Or if you were left or not, you know, right-handed. But overall, yeah, this is a very good mask. Um, one of the things I really like about this is this is the best fit, probably, of any of the gas masks I have in my collection. What I mean by that is... When I do the straps up to this, this almost suctions onto my face. Um, so it fits like a glove. Uh, the other masks fit well enough that I could use them, and they make an airtight seal. This is one of those masks where it feels like every bit of my face lines up properly with the thing. Because a lot of people don't seem to realise that most military masks, not all of them, but most military masks, you don't actually have a um, really clever sizing system. They basically just do small to large, or very small to very large, and you try the mask on until you find the one that fits your head best. With militaries, it doesn't have all the um, same you know, work, health and safety sort of things that actually respirators have to have in jobs where you have almost a custom fitted one to your face where you can then tighten the straps. With military masks they just find the one that fits your face best out of a load of preset sizes. So with most of these masks this is a size 2 CT12. I have a size 2 S10 and let me just check what the size is on this mask. As you can see there, size 2. So all these masks are size 2, so that's irrelevant. Um, but this easily fits the best, the CT12 second and the S10 third. 
because there's a variation between masks as well, despite them following a sizing guide. So you can aim for your size, but I always find with some of these masks that with some masks you might want a three, not a two, and whatever else, just because of how the inner mask fits. But as said, the Fushida F2 is easily my favourite of these, I think, now. As much as the CT12 is the cooler mask, I think, um, and it's Avon, it's British, I actually think the Fushida F2, just because of how well this individual mask fits my face, is probably my favourite respirator now. So let's talk about pricing. These in the UK at the moment are about 50 to 60 pounds. Um, the S10s you can get anywhere between about 30 and 60 pounds, depending on what year it was. I was really lucky because this one is a 2009 model. Because that has a 20 year shelf life, that means it's 2029 this mask officially expires, and their masks last longer than that, as long as you keep them in good conditions. And I got this for only like 10 or 15 pounds, it was at a car boot sale where um, I think some guy who left the army was clearing out all his old stuff that he'd taken home and didn't want. So, <laughs> 15 pounds or whatever it was for an S10 that's still well within its shelf life, very good. And this again, I think, was only about 30 pounds or so on an eBay auction, I was the one who won it. But you wouldn't normally get one of these masks for that cheap. So, if you can get an S10 that's obviously got a long shelf life on it still, get the S10 for like 30 to 50 quid. If you can get here, a CT12 or an uh, FM12 that's within a shelf life, let's just say, because that increases the value of a mask for a similar price, then I'd pick it over the S10. With the four sheeders, this one's from the 1990s, a lot of these are from the 1990s, so technically most of these are expired now, very close to the expiry dates. However, as said before with masks, expiry dates don't mean all that much because, you know, most masks now are built to such a good standard that after the expiry date finishes, that's just a kind of guideline to buy new masks for militaries and police forces. For a civilian where you would hopefully never need the mask, the seals are still going to be easily good enough to not compromise the mask after maybe 50 years. It's better to have a modern mask, but... Like I said, I've got loads of old Cold War Russian masks where the seals are still fine and the masks work, so as long as they're built well enough at the time and you don't keep them in bad conditions, keep them in a satchel bag out of direct sunlight in a room where the temperature doesn't fluctuate, the mask isn't going to really erode. The rubber looks brand new on this mask and it's 20-something years old. It's, it's older than me and I'm 23, so I think the mask's probably like 21, 22 years old. Uh, anyway, as I said, I hope this video has been helpful for the person that asked for it. Out of the three masks, this is probably my favourite one now. Um, but the CT12 is a very close second. There's only, only probably because this is a better face seal that I prefer this to the CT12. But any of these three masks are good to answer your question. I know that's not maybe what you wanted to hear. But you won't be disappointed if you get all three. The S10 is my least favourite. The CT12 is a very close second to this. The CT12 is overall a better mask, but because of the face seal this one offers me, fits me like a glove, then obviously I prefer this respirator. But, yeah, to answer your question, all three are good. If you see any of them at a sensible price, go for it. But if I had to pick one, it would be the Forshida first, the CT12 second. But, like I said, I'd be happy to buy any of them. So, hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed, if you like your gas mask videos. And support me on Patreon if you really want to, that would be great. But otherwise, see you on the next video.